welcome to the Shellonomics Podcast, presented by King Mictus, your ultimate source for pure Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles entertainment. Stay tuned and dive deep into the Turtleverse with us. Catch all the action on YouTube and Twitch for non-stop Ninja Turtles adventures and retro gaming thrills. King Mike and the heroes in a half shell. What is up, everybody? Shellonomics is back. Being this the 40th anniversary of Ninja Turtles, it's been a little difficult trying to get some guests to appear. A lot of them are doing guest appearances at Comic Cons, and we just got a little busy. You know, summertime's a little busy for everybody. So, what we wanted to do is we wanted to do a breakdown of what we feel started the Ninja Turtles super fandom, and that was the original cartoon. So, I can't promise we're going to watch all of them, but what we're going to do is we're going to break down every episode of the original five. I'm going to do a little live watch party here with you guys. I'll give you my feedback, my opinion, share a couple inside stories of what I, you know, experienced during the Turtles at this time, and hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have not yet, uh, do subscribe to Spotify, YouTube. We also do some video gaming on Twitch, and we hope to see you around for the next one. Let's get into it. This will be the only episode I do with uh, the theme song, so we'll break it down to you. Now, before we get into the theme song, though, I do want to share one little cool thing here that, um, why I love my grandmother so much. She was always my favorite person. But what happened is, as long as I was a good boy, when she used to babysit me after school or if I'd go visit her during the summer, we always had a little pack. As long as I didn't cause any trouble, which 100% of the time I didn't, for the theme song of the Ninja Turtles, I'd be able to go bananas. Now, what grandkid or any child wouldn't love Jumping on some furniture, doing ninja kicks, doing karate punches, you know, just letting loose and running around the entire house. So I made sure I was a good boy the entire day just so I can get that minute of fun. And oh, I, I couldn't thank my grandma enough for just getting letting all that energy out. So the theme song here, if you guys are new to the show, starts out with a grim sky. Moon's about 75% full. It's grim outside. You hear either like... <clears throat> some sort of electric guitar or something in the back, and that always just captivated me. And then after that, you're gonna go right down to the sewer, and it's gonna pop out. You're gonna see four turtles just like shoot up into the sky, and as a kid, you're probably like, what in the world is going on here? You also have this paid homage in, I believe it was Turtles 3 and Turtles in Time for video games, something similar where they pop out of the sewer like this. But a cool thing here that people probably, you know, again, unless you're a diehard fan of the old show, who is the first turtle you see? It's not Leonardo the leader. It's actually my guy, Michelangelo, staring you down with a pretty grim look with his nunchucks. Then they show all four of them, and then they go to that infamous Heroes in a Half Shell turtle power spot. You'll have that nice little turtle logo with the blue. This logo was very important as, um, again, only Dyer fans would probably even remember this. Do you remember the guy who would do the voice for the... For a lot of cartoons back in the day, you'd always have this return after these messages, and the turtles had this one was... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. So do comment below if you guys remember that. Also, we are on Spotify, YouTube, and we also stream on Twitch sometimes. So if you guys want to check us out, drop a follow on Twitch. Subscribe on Spotify and YouTube if you guys are big turtle fans. Continuing with the theme song here. They're all just popping out of the turtle van with April driving. They got airborne. All grabbing. Just This is the one thing that was missing in, I feel, when CBS took over is... If you just stop and stare at their faces, you can just see the grit. And I think that's just what pulled us all in as kids. Just they, they just looked like they were angry, ready to engage in combat. And I believe in the newer episodes, and like I would say maybe like seasons four and five, you'll see they're going to lose that grit. It's like they've just become happier turtles. And I always just like that cool little grit they had on their looks here. They all have their weapons ready to go. They show everybody grabbing their weapons. I know that's in Turtles 3 for Nintendo, that spot. Shredder does a nice little cool slicing of the blue, ready to go with his foot soldiers. All four of them jump down. Again, for me being a Mikey fan, uh, I'm very grateful I did have some episodes with his nunchucks. I can't say Mikey would have been my favorite if uh, they made him with the grappling hook. If they start, if I didn't get to see these episodes first. Leo comes flying in, Donatello doing machines flying on it. I mean, really cool. I mean, don't you guys wish that the Turtle Boom could have done something like this in the episodes? When the turtle blimp has appeared in the show, you usually just see it with the big, you know, I guess, like, balloon. And then when it was with the glider, it would never do what Donatello does here. He's doing backflips. And again, if you actually pause it on him, he's got that gritty attitude look on his face. Now, what's cool here is Michelangelo, they'll show, he starts batting away baseballs, 
looks like almost a grenade with his nunchuck gear. And what's cool is Shredder's Revenge actually has that as his special when you uh, charge, it, charge it up. Then they go to Hamato Yoshi who turns into Splinter. I don't know what he's jumping through, but he just breaks something just to show it looks cool. And again, maybe because of the splinter, you see like all this wooden splinters flying around. You know, Leonardo leads here. Again, just all the cool grit, and that's just another infamous post with Leonardo doing the lead. I've seen that picture up oh, you know, on a lot of fan sites. Donatello doing his machine. It looked like he's making some sort of coffee, but the entire machine blows up. Now, again, a lot of people with Raphael, people still to this day get confused if it's cool but rude or cool but crude. And that Give Me a Break has been... Um, I know they pay homage to that, and I believe it was one of the crossovers for the Nickelodeon when they brought back the old throws. I believe Raphael does that, give me a break. And I think he throws the pizza at the screen, too, if I'm not mistaken. Like you doing his turtle dance here. Now, this is the part here I really wish, and I actually brought this up in uh, the episode I did with Andrew Farrago here, is when you see all four of the turtles closing out this theme song, they're coming flying in. Mikey's on like a rope. They're all looking at the Technodrome. A lot of cartoons or even just TV shows will show clips of a you know episode in your theme song or opening you know music and uh, how cool this would have been just how the Technodrome stares them all down and just I always I always do this as a kid when they're ready to go they all just run up and how cool is it they start with Mikey and then they end with Mikey on the theme song he's just swinging his nunchucks jumping up to that Technodrome you hear the heroes in a half shell turtle power once again now we are ready to get into the episode here known as turtle tracks now this one was actually if you pause here these are i believe two mistakes you'll see leonardo happily eating the pizza and then michelangelo's the one that looks like he's holding the swords i believe in like the opening spot where they named the episode and who it was written by kind of funny they never fixed that for i believe three years or three seasons worth of episodes here we go we're starting now now there's a full moon here instead of the three quarter moon compared to the theme song dark gritty looks like smoke nice quiet night out and some real cool music again. Here comes some thugs. The show Bebop here as a human, along with two, four, there are six people. Now what's funny is they say that one of these guys comes back in the old gang and that um, bald guy kind of looks like Stone Cold. He's, just, he's like a smaller guy. But I know he comes back in a couple episodes. He's in one of the Easter episodes and he's also in the one where Michelangelo joins the Bebop and Rocksteady's old gang. But here he's a lot shorter in this anime. And for some reason they're just beating up the car almost like the um like a street but maybe Street Fighter <laughs> the video games was uh you know paying homage to Turtles here as they just beat the hell out of this car. I'm not sure why or what the purpose was, but they did that. And then crime is the first word you hear in the episode. And that's April O'Neil. Now you got some guy here reading the newspaper. And this is what I never noticed as a kid, maybe because I never paid attention, but there is a little gang banger with a he's got two spray can, spray paint cans on him with graffiti there's another gentleman with graffiti and he's got a little wooden leg so shredder was really able to get anybody to join his you know foot clan and army of uh you know gang bangers here and then you got this and now everybody's spraying this guy there's one guy who comes in with a happy face and he's got the almost like that nirvana happy face on his shirt except it's a bright yellow shirt and it's got a sad face and again, just the details here, he's just a happy guy just looking to torch somebody. And there's even a girl there with little pink pink tops and, you know, crazy punk glasses and spray can. So the dude just, he just accepts it and moves out. What's crazy is he actually has green hands, which I never saw until today. So I'm kind of doing this as I play and pause. Uh, let's just see if we can see more detail. Now they show April on a whole bunch of television screens at the House O Media, that's what they call it. Now the first, uh, again, not a turtle, but you do get Rob Pulse in your voice and somebody. I have absolutely no idea. Now they're going into a spot here with, um, I'm guessing this is like a police chief or somebody who's just coming in telling you about like how this was happening here and inspecting how this can only be done with a samurai sword. Walks in, sees the police officer all tied up, examines the rope. Here comes a nice little comedic spot here. Yeah, and this kind of comedy I enjoy because it's not too, it's, it's not overdone in the first episode when he goes, you know, April's like, how can you tell the rope's from Japan? And he's like, look, it's made in Japan. It even has like a little Japan thing on the rope. Yeah, little something like that I thought was kind of comical. And now April's talking about ninjas, thousand-year-old clan of assassins. Now, see burning in the news van. April had a lot more of a news team here compared to episodes as we grow later. Vernon's telling April, let's get the heck out of here. She's thinking something's gonna go down. She's got her cameraman, and it looks like a stage crew guy. And these guys, I believe, disappear after the first five episodes. Later on, it's just going to be April, Irma, Vernon, and Burn. With an occasional, I think her name was uh, Mildred, 
and a couple episodes later. Vernon's not really acting like the chicken he did later on, but here he was just like, let's beat it. Here they come. Here come the punks. One guy's got a big sword. April's freaking out, wants to get to the camera. And Rob Paulson already has two voices, and we haven't even gotten started with this turtle. He pans on um, another camera crew guy. So that's two Rob Paulson voices already. Cam Clark's one of the other guys as he's boogieing. Vernon boogies. Here comes Rocksteady looking up to charge April here. So instead of having it like in the movie where the foot soldiers tell April to shut it, it's Rocksteady telling him to knock it off. So he's ready to pretty much beat the hell out of her. Nice gritty look. April somehow saves herself by chucking a camera. He actually catches it. I don't know how she's able to physically do this, but she slides into a sewer here. And this good anime here showing you what the sewers are like. April's running for her life. Dudes are trying to chase her. Bebop finds a manhole cover. They go in there, coming after her. April freaking out, out of breath. And eventually she's gonna run smack right into a brick wall. Pow. Ooh. Great sound effects. She wakes up, she's surrounded. And David Wise here, if you guys have watched many documentaries, was always big on wanting the turtles to talk street. And he still claims that, you know, the first line from a turtle is, Chill out, homeboy, from Donatello. As he blocks a shot from uh, Rocksteady. And the guy with the sword comes. Raphael disarms him. Rocksteady wants to say Donatello's dead. Donnie counters, throws him right. Bebop go, uh, Rocksteady goes face first right into some bricks. The other dude's starting to fear for his life, gone. And the up close, you know, Leonardo and Mikey are there in the dark. They actually pull a gun out on him, uh, the purple haired guy. I'm not sure, that couldn't have been a retro mutagen gun, it must have just been a regular gun. They disarmed him. Other guy got his wood thing chopped off by Leo. This is my favorite though, if you guys ever watch up close, Bebop has a chain. Donatello disarms and you just see how sad Bebop looks like, oh my god! <laughs> it's a hilarious look he gives. Not really that violent, just their show. And I'm not sure if that's that that sound effect from the turtle who flips sounds like Donatello, but we can't really confirm it. And they take all of them out. And the first turtle you see is Michelangelo's foot. Here come the turtles holding all their weapons. Raphael gives some sarcasm. And then April does one of her many feints. And then now, I'm not sure how Shredder catches them. They must have had a camera on one of the those punks. Because Shredder knows what's going on down there. And now April's gonna wake up here. Realize she's there's no clue where she is. And then it's Splinter who actually talks to her first. And she faints again. Donatella tries to force her to get up. She yells again. Splinter just looks so happy and joyous. I'm not sure if he made the sushi or where he ordered it from, but she looked like she was ready to eat sushi in the morning. And here comes Mikey with all the pizza and again fun fact for you guys michelangelo is only called mikey once in the uh, ninja turtle original cartoon if you guys stick around to the end i will go ahead and reveal which episode it was if you're getting freaked out by hearing all these pizza toppings donatello trash talk in april for eating sushi another thing i enjoyed about these is leonardo was not as high pitched if you watch these first five episodes leonardo was more of a calm leader he starts Almost being a little more of a panicky leader in the uh, other seasons, but here I just always liked his tone. Season 2 he was pretty good too, just uh, how Cam Clark voiced him in here. So April's telling him what's going on and then is in shock. She's talking to Ninja Turtles. And Splinter's going to go ahead and give her the explanation is their origin. We go all the way back to Hamato Yoshi. And almost like he was like a leader back then because he was watching these guys throw up some ropes. Yep, he was a teacher. Make it easy for kids. They had the book just say art on it. And then for some reason, Roku Saki comes from behind and cheap shots him. Here comes an old sensei. Kind of a cool thing here. Rocco tricks Splinter because he can't bow because he's stuck to the wall with a knife. And, he's and it looks like he's refusing to bow and show respect. And then he takes out a knife without even having anything. They just say, I think he's going to kill the sensei. He looks freaked out. They don't even let him talk. And that's Barry Gordon, one of the voices. I think Tom sends the other one. And Splinter voices the wise sensei to throw him out. Now he's a bum, hanging out with some rats, and up going to New York. <clears throat> now how, how this works is a kid buys some turtles in a nice glass bowl, somehow trips, and you'll see how cool the animation is. Again, if you watch this slowly, you'll see, again, just to appreciate the company that did these first few episodes, when that glass bowl breaks, if you slow it down, you can actually see all four turtles on like the little guardrails there, and then they fall in, and the kid tries to grab them. They all fell right on Splinter's head. Well, Hamato Yoshi at the time. And this is just a funny one for the foot soldiers. He drop kicks a Coca-Cola machine. 
and out comes a whole bunch of coke on the foot instead of holding guns what they do is they hold like almost like a spear chugger which is what they use these spears in the video games they actually have those on a lot of the foot, car foot soldier characters in turtles 2 and 3 for nintendo and they're going after a man with ice cream and he puts his hands up and i guess for comedic purposes the ice cream falls on his head i forgot the turtles and it looks like that's that's a Mona Lisa spot right there in the photograph. It almost looks like a parody of uh, Mona Lisa on the picture where Splinter is reading. And he's also got a uh, feather. And he uses it as a writing utensil in there too. Instead of a pen, it's like a feather with ink. It's pretty cool. Now you're going to see here, Splinter opens the door. And the turtles are in some mysterious goo. And that's at about the 9 minute mark. And that is the first time you'll get a commercial break in the episodes here. As we come back, Mikey's twirling his nunchucks. Raphael is, you know, they're all kind of sitting there just waiting patiently, and April's trying to understand what happened. And we all know later they'll reveal who was behind that evil, you know, plot. So he explains that, you know, he's trying to clean it off him. And again, just details here. You hear the sound effects of the cloth when he's trying to wipe, wipe it off. And then he explains that whoever touches this becomes whoever they most recently became in contact with. So the turtles are turning human because they were hanging out with Yoshi. And then Yoshi, although he was with the turtles, they say he was with the rats more. That's how he became a rat. He mutates as well. And he loses his height. And the turtles nickname him Splinter. I'm going to show a nice little spot here as he not only karate chops, but bites the wood. And he checks out his guys here. Mikey does his chucks. All of them do a little spot here. It's good stuff here. I don't know if you guys know this, but another cool thing is here is when Lee, uh, Splinter's giving the intro to everybody. Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. These are all part of a Topps trading card set, which is really cool too, like all these photographs here. Now, I don't know how Leonardo does this, but he actually slices a brick in half during his little intro. And they all had their little color in the background, which was great. And Splinter says that's how they became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The first time you hear that in full. And they're trying to find out who dropped that mutagen. Excellent five-part miniseries here. And April thinks that they committed the robberies. So she's trying to book, and the first of many well, um, mistakes in animation here. So Donatello jumps with his bow, does a little laugh, and then they go into Rob Paulson's voice, but they show Donatello doing the talking. He's still chomping on pizza. April's gonna try and exploit these guys. Donatello's saying, don't do that, because then they're all gonna come after him. April looks discouraged, because she thought she had a big story. And Donatello, they're kind of hold, they're kind of holding April as a prisoner now, until they can reach a settlement, how they're gonna be able to, you know, coexist. Now we have Pat Frilly as Burn Thompson. Now they're all just waiting to find out what to do. Splinter's in a meditation pose here in the lotus position. Try again, Mr. Wizard, because Mikey says uh, April stays with them for the rest of her life. Leonardo's cleaning his sword off. Again, yeah, awesome sound effect when he puts the sword back in his belt. Just little details here that people you know, don't appreciate. And now they're thinking April can help them out because she can get into places they can't. It's quite the obvious there. No. Rocksteady, before he's known as Rocksteady, is talking to Shredder. And Shredder wants to know if they look like turtles. And Rocksteady's freaking out. He wants to know if they were turtles or not. Now Donatello wants to play, you know, almost like uh, street crime here. They're trying to do some almost detective work here, trying to find some clues. Mike thinks they're not going to find anything. Donatello finds a ninja pizza. I don't know if that's a napkin or uh, looks like matches almost. And Michelangelo's hype because it's the place where they can get some pizza. And April's going up. Here's some more comedic spots here. Donatello gives her the you wouldn't last five minutes in a ninja pizza parlor. Then looks at us and says he loves saying lines like that. We're hungry. We're in big trouble, April says. Well, they go up. My grandma always liked this spot here, too, because there's an old lady in a, in a shopping cart. And she sees the turtles and says, monsters. Raphael tells her to chill out, and she kicks the cart away and pulls out a big gun. Oh, that's hilarious. Right here, they got to stick up. Now they're going to a men's clothing store. Yeah, I watched all these on VHS with my grandma all the time, so she always liked this one too, because again, these uh, park where they give the disguises, and they do the old school, he is looking at you, kid. Now they're walking, trying to keep quiet, but on the side, wants Leo to cut, play some cards with him. Leonardo, not a fan of it, he told him to cut the cards. Leonardo cuts it up, sends that guy away. People can't get their names right. The guy's selling fake teeth and goofy noses. Pre-cosplaying days, to a degree, because this came out in the 80s. Ah, the good old boombox. A set of headphones, they just walked around with a loud radio and just played it all over. All these little ninja spots they have here, ninja shoes, they're all the ninja places. 
Ninja Pieces, Ninja Shoe Repair, Ninja Dry Cleaner, Ninja Video Rentals, and Ninja Dentist. So it's almost like they're all like little like Chinatown. It's like Shredderville almost. And now you got the guys working on pizza. People wants to think about anything besides pizza. People think something's up. Wow, that is kind of crazy. So whether it was a joke or not for a pizza spot, <laughs> Michelangelo does say, boy, this is a weird place. They don't have pepperoni. How can a pizza place not have pepperoni? Especially in New York. Go to the next spot here. There's a nice camera that Shredder can check out. He's starting to get furious here. Nice voice work by James Avery in this episode as well. Now we have one sashimi pizza and three whipped cream pizzas. I'll give you guys five seconds to guess who got the sashimi pizza. That was Raphael. The other three got whipped cream. Was going into a security service building here. Now I wonder who this like voice receptionist is. I don't know if she is a robot or if she's related to Shredder because we never get to see her again. But it's crazy how she talks to the foot soldier and they can understand her too. So then April freaks out, goes to a pay found, and then gets kidnapped. I love how the three foot soldiers grab another great pose. Comes a funny spot here. They want to open a threatening note and Raph's like, nope, it's the check. It's a very expensive pizza place. There we go to go to the pay phone. This is some good stuff here. Left her wallet. Press pass. And then Rob Paulson does the Yeah, you know that water. You just chewing gum anywhere. Another spot here, Donatella thinks she's got a big hole in her purse, and they see her purse on top of the building. Almost like she either threw it there to leave them a clue. But now they're all tied up. But here we go. Now we got our first fight with the ninjas. Look at all those foot soldiers. Those are ready to go. Donatello's confused about it. Who's gonna be the first turtle in action? It's gonna be Leonardo. No, it's Raphael, and you just hear the great clangs with the noise with the swords and size clinging. And they did a good job here too. I remember Laird and Eastman, I think we're talking, I can't. 100% quote me on this guys, but I do know that they they're able to blow up robots so they couldn't really have ninjas, you know, get stabbed and you know Get uh, heads chopped off, but if you do it with robots, it's allowed. So that's why I know they had the Foot Clan as uh, robots here So Raphael takes out this foot and then goes with the infamous Clang. Did you say Clang? You know, slices and dices another one. Now I tell it those dudes nuts, they're robots. And then my favorite spot, probably one of the top ten for me, being a Michelangelo fan is then just jump up, says, let's rock, takes off his jacket, springs into the air, swings his chucks down, and takes out at least about three right there. And he's got his nice grit, beautiful sound effect. Everybody takes off their jacket. They got this electrical music that is timeless and is in tons of the turtle episodes here where they have, it's like their battle cry music. Donatello swings at one foot soldier, takes out another, smacks him into the wall and they actually blow up. Leo takes out another three. Shredder thinks he knows that fighting style where they replay Donatello taking out two foot. And Shredder's confused thinking that Hamada Yoshi still lives. Gets us more intrigued. Here comes another foot soldier. Instead of using a sword, he shoots a gun at Mikey. Mikey runs out of the way. Goes, what the heck? The other guy's like a Japanese paper fan. It's like a beam. Raphael having trouble. Again, I like this too because at least in the beginning, I'm somebody who likes to see a, a hero struggle a little bit. I don't like when they go undefeated. So it was nice to see these battles here where they didn't, you know, just um, have a flawless victory, so to speak. Struggles a little bit, and eventually says, eat this, goes aside, blows up the paper fan. Looks like another foot's got like a a homing uh, shrook in it. Gets thrown at Leo, Leo blocks it, sounds like a bullet sting, and then Mike's got a crazy idea. And I'm not sure how they do it, but the strength of all four turtles are actually able to break the building and have the bricks fall on top of them. And then Mikey doesn't even need Leo to cut the rope, he just disarms the rope for April. The foot are retreating, turtles are following him. And it looks like you can see the foot just kind of almost like a video just disappearing one by one. Leo has a rope, has, I'm not sure how this works, but his sword sticks into the building. Gonna roll with it. Now until he's his bow staff able to clean all the turtles and slide down. That's gotta be, now, Back in our day, we used to climb rope during gym, and we also used to get that nasty rope burn on our hands, so I'm sure the turtle's hands slide on the rope had to be killing a little bit, I would think. I always hated those burns. And you catch another mistake here, you have two Raphaels. It looks like they lost Michelangelo in the process of going down. Mike wants to know where everybody went, Raph says they went home. Better's in a really cool room here as he looks at the, looks at them all. Still can't figure out who they are. Donatello sees the camera, he knows who they are. And somebody's watching them. You want to who's the dude with the metal face? Shredder figures out it's the Ninja Turtles, or at least Yoshi's Turtles. 
But now they don't, he doesn't want them finding his Technodrome. Turtles are confused. But Apolos, it's only down, so they go all bananas trying to find it. Uh, runs first with Mikey, Raph, Donatello trailing. They pull out of breath, stands around. Put her going downtown. They're trying to catch him. Shredder tells him to stop at any cost. They're pretty much just blowing up the building, so there's no evidence. There is water crazy up in this roof here. April's trying to hold on to a desk, and the water pulls her away from it. Until it gives us a wink that they're okay because they're turtles. April's struggling here. Raph helps April and says, I owe you one. Here comes one of my favorite lines. April says, I don't know if I can take much more of this. As they're running upstairs to get out of the building, Raphael goes, hey, look on the bright side. At least it's not raining. That one was always so well-timed. Up, up they go. Water is getting crazy in here. And here comes the first time you hear the battle cry of Michelangelo saying, Cowabunga! He surfs on like a desk of some sort. They're trying to hold on as best they can. They're going up, up, up. Whole building is flooded. They've got the rope. They all cling to it. Leo pulls that sword away. And the building just explodes with water. And they bring... I'm not sure how they had it, but it must have been from the battle in the other building. But they bring down the gear of the foot soldiers to show Splinter. And Splinter knows that it's the uniform of the Foot Clan. So Splinter knows Oroku Saki is in town. And Splinter knows this isn't going to be an easy task. So Leonardo says they don't know the meaning of the word defeat. Like he has a little sarcasm, says we never bothered to look it up in the dictionary. And April wants to know if these guys take anything seriously. Raphael says of course they do. They bust out some more pizza and then for some reason April wants a slice of the bananas and sausage. But as we bring this episode in for a landing, we'll go ahead and keep it up here for the ending credits. This will be the first one to do, and it says right here, you know, Turtles, created by Eastman and Laird, based upon comic characters, 1984 Mirage Studios, adaption for TV, 1987 Playmate Toys, Inc. Well, there you get the screenplay written by uh, David Wise and Patty Howitt, animation direction, sequence directors, art direction, storyboard artists, character designs, oh, background color, voice talent. Here you go. Here are the ones that are... Let's see if, um, wow, I'm going to give you guys a shocker. So you got James Avery, Cam Clark, Thompson Coleman, Pat Fraley, Barry Gordon, Renee Jacobs. Now here's one I was unaware of. Tress McNeil was actually involved in this episode. I didn't know that. And then it says voice talent was Fred Wolf. I'm not sure if he was behind it, but it has him as a voice talent as well, which is interesting. Peter Renaday, we know, is Splinter. And then it has, I may botch this, T-H-O-M. It's either going to be pronounced Tom or Twam. And then Pinto. Going more and more. It's just another cool spot. Now, this part right here, actually, the background use, this was actually in an episode here because this is where they find the technical zone. That's going to be in episode two. And again, here you'll see, like David Wise always told you guys, but none of us as kids ever looked at the credits for the most part. Original music right here by Chuck Lore, and that says DC Brown also. Produced in association with Playmates Toys. Animation, Toei Animation C O L T D. God bless Toei Animation. Who knows what this, what this, uh, here is what it become. So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify. Comment down below on your feedback here. If you guys like this sort of uh, watch along we're doing here, we're trying something new. And we sure hope to see you guys in the next episode. King Mike and the heroes in a half shell. Thanks for listening to Shellonomics. Follow us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for the video version. Stay tuned for more Ninja Turtles insights.